Are you still using Windows? Are you tired of the constant bugs and forced updates? All the privacy concerns with Copilot taking screenshots of everything you do. You just bought your computer, but Windows 11 is way too laggy. You got a blue screen of death right when you needed your computer most. Well, sounds like you need to switch to Linux. And honestly, it's not that hard. For most, privacy on home computers is a major issue. And who doesn't love big tech spying on you for their own gain? And what about those chips with back doors built right in? And of course, Windows has telemetry built right in. And yes, on Linux, you can install packages that have telemetry also. Just check out this page, courtesy of Debian. And who could forget the shiny new update of Copilot Plus PC, taking screenshots of everything you're doing. I hope you didn't have your bank account open with the password revealed when it took a screenshot. Of course, they're using the screenshots to train their AI and probably however else they can make money off of you. My personal favorite was when the ads started popping up in the start menu. And now you Windows 11 users get to have ads built right into the file explorer. Neat. And who doesn't love those forced updates right when you're in the middle of something very important? Nothing says, this is my computer, like an operating system deciding to force an update and then restart without my permission. And why do I need a Microsoft account just to create a Windows account? Probably just more data for big tech. Kind of always boils down to what you actually really need. For most people, they are probably just using their computer with a web browser and doing everything through the web browser. So for those people, you could probably very much get away with a older computer with a lightweight distro. All right, I know what just popped in your head. What's a distro? Well, a distro is nothing more than an operating system with the Linux kernel. So basically it's your operating system with a bunch of system libraries like audio and display drivers, along with usually your choice of a desktop environment. Right, so what is a desktop environment? Well, it's basically a user interface to use your computer. It's a suite of software that has things like your lock screen, maybe a start menu or a taskbar with your time, maybe Wi-Fi, battery information, and general information like that. Now, since there's a lot of distros, there's distros made for a bunch of different use cases. There's distros made for desktop computers. There's distros made for only being like a web server or a supercomputer. There's just a lot of different options. And a distro will generally have all the packages and libraries and stuff you need to install on your computer, kind of for an easier ease of use, basically. Of course, unless you're installing like Linux from scratch or Gentoo, then you have to do everything yourself. All right, no, you cannot run every single piece of software that you run on Windows that you can on Linux, but there are great strides being made in this regard. We have things like wine and bottles, and I'm sure there's other software. Now, that being said, there are a lot of great open source and free software applications you can use on Linux, but they're not all created equal. On one hand, you have Blender, which is a 3D suite creation tool, which is absolutely fantastic. And then there's GIMP. Yeah, much to be desired there, but hopefully they can catch up and be a little bit like Blender at some point. Now, as far as gaming goes on Linux, there's a lot of games available thanks to Valve and Proton and their work on Proton. Now, there's some games that don't work, and I believe most of those are usually due to kernel level access because of anti-cheat. Now, I hate cheaters just as much as anyone else. But at the same time, I don't want some random third-party application to have kernel access on my computer. CrowdStrike, anybody? But we do have Steam and Lutris, which has a lot of games you can run and play on Linux. Also check out ProtonDB to see what games are kind of in a good state or still not there yet. Okay, so which distro should you install? Many will say Ubuntu or even Linux Mint, especially if you're coming from Windows. You know what, I've never used Linux Mint, so let's go with that one. First, we're gonna need to make a live USB with our distro of choice. So we're gonna head to linuxmint.com. 
All right, once there, we're gonna go to the download. All right, um, I'm gonna go with the Sleek Modern Innovative Cinnamon Edition. I think this one it looks close, actually XFCE and even Mate. They look similar to Windows. So if you're coming from Windows, any of these are gonna do well because of the way they have their little menu. I'm gonna go with Cinnamon. So I'm gonna go ahead and download from a place close to me. I'm close to Harvard, I guess, probably MIT. So I'm gonna save this ISO and that will download. All right, in the meantime, while that's downloading, we're gonna to have to burn this ISO image to a USB drive. Now you can't just drag and drop the ISO because it works like a live operating system running from this. To do that, there's an application I love to use called Balena Etcher. It's very simple. We select an image, we select the drive, and then we flash it. And then it's pretty much ready to go. So if you head over to etcher.balena.io and you can download Etcher, or you can use another program if you wish. It just needs to be able to take the ISO and make a live USB. All right, now that's done downloading, we're gonna take our USB drive, stick it in our computer. Okay, all we gotta do is hit the flash from file. We're gonna take our Linux Mint, hit open, select the target, which is going to be my generic flash disk, and hit flash. And that should write out the ISO as it were a boot drive, bootable drive on our USB so we can look at the operating system and install it from there. Okay, warning, make sure you back up any documents or photos or anything you don't wanna lose before you're going through this process of installing Linux over your Windows PC. Now there is a process called dual booting where you have Windows and Linux on the same hard drive or multiple hard drives. So when you start up your computer, you get to decide which one you boot into. But that is kind of beyond the scope of this video because all we're gonna do is just install it on the computer. Because just in case you don't aren't really ready to go into Linux full time, at least for now. <laughs> kind of funny. Every time I do a video, always something just goes wrong. Today, Belena Etcher decided not to work on my framework laptop running Void Linux, so I ran over to my MacBook Air, or I brought it over here. And I'm flashing uh, Linux Mint right now, and it's validating. So right after this, we'll be sticking that USB drive in there and starting it up. Okay, now we got to power down the system. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Then we're going to plug in the USB once it's powered it down, and then turn it back on. When we turn it back on, we're going to be spamming the BIOS key. I don't remember what it is, so it's usually like F11. You might want to look up the specs on your computer. Now, right now that it's shut down, we're going to put in the USB with one hand, turn it on, and I think I'm F11 or F12, I don't remember. I'm going to spam both of them until I get to my BIOS. Aha. And now... You can see I have void, grub, or EFI USB device. I am going to boot from there. And now I want to start, that's tiny, but I want to start Linux Mint 22.2. .2. And now, once it loads, keep in mind this is running from a USB, so it's not going to be super snappy or fast. All right, I think it's finally loading. It seems to be incredibly slow for my machine for whatever reason. I think if you went with uh, Mate, it's kind of gonna be much more snappier. At this point, you can literally just kind of look around and see what the operating system, how it feels and behaves. Remember, keep in mind, this is running from a USB and not the hard, internal hard drive, so it's not gonna be as snappy. As you can see, that kind of took a while. We get a feel of how it looks, how it operates. We got a start menu kind of thing over here. 
Got a bunch of stuff installed. And when you are ready, you kind of just want to hit this and follow the directions. You'll have Linux Mint installed on your machine. I am not going to do this because this is my daily driver Void Linux and I'm keeping with what I have. Now, is 2026 going to be the year of Linux finally? You know what? I don't really think so and I can't say for certain, but I bet we'll see a larger influx of Linux users, which should benefit Linux for the greater, I hope. But awesome. Way to level up by switching to a based operating system. You're well on your way to freedom. Anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment to defeat that algo monster.